Depending on who you ask, the M1A1 and the T28 main battle tanks can be some of the best or some of the worst vehicles in the game. Sometimes you'll see players decimate enemy teams with them, and other times they're taken out before they can even reach an objective. Or worst of all, camped at the back of the map going 12-0 after a 30 minute round of conquest. But why is this? Why is there so much inconsistency to how players perform in these vehicles? What does it take to be successful with these tanks? Today I hope to answer these questions by giving you the facts about the main battle tanks, letting you know what you're doing wrong and how to make these babies destroy enemy teams. The main battle tank's focus should be on countering enemy armour as well as supporting friendly infantry pushing objectives. They are classified as heavy armour and they have the second most defence of all ground vehicles, only losing out to the MAV. They share the same spawn slot as the tall rail tanks and the ram. In terms of firepower, they are some of the strongest weapons in the game. They can be equipped with the M-patch shells, the heat shells, the staff shells, as well as the many strong passenger seat options available. A cost to this armour and power is your speed and manoeuvrability. The tanks are slow and clunky, trying to move this thing around the map is a battle in itself. Not only do you need to keep an eye out for enemy players, but you also need to make sure that you don't hit random debris and walls which litter the battlefield. If you do hit these obstacles, you'll likely lose all momentum and be completely vulnerable. Positioning and awareness are the name of the game when driving these tanks. Every class other than support can and likely is planning on getting you. Because of your speed and clunginess, C5 is going to be what gets you the most. I don't think it's a stretch to say that most of the Battlefield 2042 community has become dependent on using this to deal with vehicles. And honestly, who can blame them? It has all you need to instantly kill a single vehicle that gets close to you without much effort, skill or reliance on your teammates. As well as being useful in a variety of other situations, C5 also isn't affected by any countermeasure, so killing the person using it before they detonate is the only way to deal with them. So how can we use this overdependence to our advantage? Well C5's biggest weakness is how close players need to be in order to use it. We need to control the engagement range. The worst thing you can do as a tank player is rush in. The moment you move up too quickly without surveying your surroundings is the moment you get enveloped and most often die. You need to slowly inch into objectives, making sure that you're dealing with enemies at a distance so that they cannot easily counter you. Be wary of places with lots of hidey holes that infantry can exploit in order to get close to you. Don't neglect the power of seat swapping to the fourth seat in order to drop a scan and get an idea of who might be sneaking around. If you have to move quickly, make sure that you don't stop until you can safely check the area. C5 takes time to deploy. So if you're moving at full speed, it is likely that they can only get one or two pieces of explosive on you before you're out of range. Be sure to exploit the third person mode. If you click and hold the aim button while you're in third person mode, you can look around the vehicle without moving the turret. This can be useful if you want to take a look around your tank, but you're still certain that your turret is pointed towards the most likely spot your enemies will come from. If and when enemies with C5 get too close, you have some quick decision making to do. Do you try and hit them with your main cannon, or do you seat swap to the second seat and use the turret to kill them? Most often your brain will tell you to do the former since it takes less input, but often swapping to your second seat is actually the best bet, especially if you're fighting a Mikhail or Sundance, who both have abilities that make them good at rushing towards you. The gunner seat is much more manoeuvrable since it doesn't have the turn speed delay which your main cannon has. Lastly, if you do get stuck with C5 but manage to kill your aggressor before they detonate, you should still back off. 
You see that little gift that they kindly gave you before their passing is still attached to you and it's just waiting for the slight bit of damage before detonating and dealing its full payload of damage to your health bar. Back off, find a safe place, hop out and interact with the C5 in order to safely disarm it. Pushing up with infantry is also a really good idea. Let your men capture the objective while you provide support by cutting off their reinforcements that are spawning in to defend. Having a good knowledge of how spawn points work will also help you a lot. From what I've observed, if attackers are on the east point of an objective capturing it, then enemies are most likely to spawn on the far west of the objective. You shouldn't be camping and just focusing on kills, but instead putting yourself in locations in which you focusing on kills helps your team win the game. It's better to get 5 kills help capture a point, die and repeat over the duration of the game than it is to sit back camping to get 20 kills over a 30 minute conquest game. Let's look at the three cannon shells we can choose to equip to our tank. The empath shells are your bread and butter tank shells. These are effective against everything, especially enemy armor. If we look at the damage numbers, we can see that just like with rocket launchers, we should be focusing on avoiding front armor shots. Aim for those rear shots if able, but otherwise focus on hitting the sides or the top of enemies. They're also quite effective against infantry with a decent amount of splash damage. I do find that they have a knack for feeling a little inconsistent when being used on infantry. Sometimes you'll get a one shot kill and other times you'll do only non-lethal amounts of damage. For this reason I would recommend getting into the habit of immediately switching to your machine gun after you fire a shot. In the best case scenario, your shell will kill in one and you'll swap for nothing. In the worst case, you can pepper your injured prey with bullets in order to finish them off before they can scurry away. Your next empath shell needs to be replenished anyway, so swapping costs you nothing but gives you a good bit of insurance. Marking right side. about 60 meters from you. The heat shells are amazing at their intended job and I hate them. To me there are everything wrong with vehicle infantry balance in the game. Their explosion radius on these shells is crazy, making them capable of completely decimating entire enemy squads of infantry. They are just so unsporting, like fishing with dynamite. Unlike with the empath shells, you barely have to aim at all, just hit it anywhere around them and you're practically guaranteed a kill. The trade off for that raw power is a slower turret turn speed and reduced damage to vehicles. The reduced damage is quite significant too, so much that it makes your tank very vulnerable against other vehicles because most other vehicles will be able to outdamage you. I can't stress this enough, I know it seems tempting to use these for their destructive infantry wrecking power but you're giving up your team's valuable anti-vehicle asset by taking these shells. The staff shells are both great and terrible depending on the situation. When paired with a good recon player who is consistently tagging target vehicles with the soft lamb, tracer dot or row hack, they are amazing, turning the main battle tank into something akin to an artillery vehicle. You see the staff shells can lock onto tagged targets without line of sight. Lock your shells onto tagged vehicles, aim up and launch and watch your shell find its mark. Locked shells deal increased bonus damage, making these shells do the most damage of any of the other main battle tank options. Getting a friend and doing this is an absolute blast and I would strongly recommend trying this combination out if you're able. However, if you do not have a guaranteed spotter and you are just using these shells without the lock, then you'll be very disappointed. Their damage without the bonus is quite low and their splash radius is almost non-existent, so you have essentially imposed a self-nerf onto your tank. Maybe these will see more play if we get some more recon tagging improvements in the game. Perhaps something which gives some good feedback to whenever a tagged vehicle is hit, rather than only if your tag leads to a direct kill. Right now, tagging as a recon is just really unrewarding and feels like a waste of time, which is a massive shame. Or maybe we could choose a tagging unit to replace the spotter option in the commander seat. I don't know. You also have the choice of a light machine gun or a heavy machine gun as a secondary <laughs> weapon and honestly I think they're both great and perform very well. The light machine gun shoots faster, has more spread and does less damage. It's great for dealing with close range targets. Naturally the heavy MG is slower 
has almost no spread and does more damage. Perfect for sniping long range infantry peeking from behind cover. Use both of these between shell loading times on infantry and soft skin vehicles. Flicking between both your primary and your secondary is really where the power of the tank lies. My usual loadout on these vehicles are the impact shells, the heavy MG on the driver's seat, the heavy MG with thermal vision on the secondary seat, obviously the motor pod on the third seat, and thermal on the commander spotting seat. In terms of countermeasures I see no reason other than to take the thermal smoke and the APS. Speaking of APS, I want to discuss how I use it to get the best effect from it. The Active Protection System, or APS, is your anti-almost everything mode. The vehicle version of this system counters pretty much everything other than C5, anti-tank mines, bullets, and the tall real tank rounds. Using APS at the correct time is an art, and once you get it right, you'll feel like a tactical genius. You see, you'll want to use APS right before you're about to get hit in order to get the most uptime and intercept the most projectiles from it. You want to make it as hard as possible for the enemy to notice that they are going to waste a shot on your defense system. If you use it too soon, players will notice and hold their fire until the system is down. This is especially important when you're fighting engineers who need almost all of their rockets and grenades to be able to solo you. Use APS when you're taking too much heat in order to give yourself some breathing room and an opening to pull back to repair. When deployed, it's active for around 7 seconds, after which time it goes offline for 20 seconds. When you do not have APS up, you're at your most vulnerable, so play even more cautiously. Good APS use is critical in order to get the most out of the main battle tank. Of course it wouldn't be a marzipan dan video without a sprinkling of tips which you can use to help improve your game. When you're being locked on and you see the lock on warning, be sure to hold your countermeasures until you see the missile incoming message. You want the enemy to waste around on your countermeasures. Enemies can hold the lock for as long as they have you in their vision, so even though that ringing is enough to give you tinnitus, let them hold it until they get impatient, fire and you can successfully counter it. Also be sure to use your thermal smoke for lock on weapons before using your APS since APS is the more versatile countermeasure, whereas thermal smoke can only counter lock-ons. Additionally, since you're given a directional indicator showing where you're being locked on from, consider trying to find cover that can protect you if possible so that you don't need to waste a countermeasure. One-on-one -on -one tank battles are so much fun in this game. In order to tip the scales in your favour, you're going to want to make sure that you're doing a couple of things. Deploy your APS at the perfect time, right as they fire at you. Watch out for the enemy APS. You don't want to waste your rounds on them. Wait for that green light to turn red so that you know that your shells won't be intercepted. You absolutely do not want to shoot them right before the APS deactivates, since you'll have to waste time waiting for your next shell to replenish while they would have otherwise been open. If you have an anti-vehicle pod equipped on the third seat, like the mortar pod or the rocket weapon pod, swap to that seat between firing your main cannon and get one hit in before swapping back to the driver's seat. Just be aware that you can only do this once per fight since the pods do not replenish while no one is manning them. This is a great way of getting a burst of damage which most enemy tank players won't be expecting. Move your tank around, don't make yourself easy to hit by just sitting still. You can even consider popping in and out of cover between shell rounds if possible. If you have the space, you can also consider a flanking manoeuvre in order to get some rear shots in. Remember that your thermal smoke can also be used to conceal you. Use this to try and help you dodge an enemy's shots. Cav and the Mav are the two most important vehicles for you to focus on. These vehicles act as mobile spawn points, so if left unchecked they can let the enemy team completely dominate the flags located around the maps. Good drivers of these vehicles will keep moving around, making them especially difficult for friendly engineers to take care of, but thankfully your tank can chase them down and turn them into scrap in no time. The CAV isn't a threat at all unless it has the 25mm APDS rounds equipped. 
but if you catch a bunch of those rounds with your APS with their 8 round magazine and slow replenishment time, then it shouldn't have enough firepower to kill you. Just remember that a cav can and most likely does have APS too. The Mav on the other hand can put up a really good fight and in some cases straight up dominate you. The biggest advantage you have against MAVs is the fact that you have APS and it doesn't. Once all of the passengers are focusing fire on you is when you will want to pop APS in order to block the most damage. Your best bet with dealing with these is hoping that you can get some friendly engineer support while you're fighting. The less coordinated the gunners are, the easier the MAV will go down. Damn it. Be sure to select good options for your passenger seats. So many players neglect changing these from the default weapons equipped even after they've unlocked strictly better options. For example, I don't think there's any reason to not use the infrared versions of the machine guns offered in the second seat. Yes, you give up the zoom, but most of the time this seat will be fighting medium and close range enemies, and the visibility you gain from the IR versions is massive. Liz is so broken, her missiles can get me around corners. They always hit and I need dice to nerf her. She makes playing armor so impossible. Oh sorry, I've been spending too much time on the battlefield subreddit. I had no idea what came over me. Lissiles are a threat, yes, but much less of a threat than any of the other launchers if you know what you're doing. Getting hit by the first Lissile is going to happen, just like the first rocket from a sneaky Boris is going to hit. But the massive weakness of Liz missiles is that they can be shot down. Liz's have two missiles, so when you get hit by one, you can pretty much guarantee the second one is going to follow it up. And since you know the rough direction the Lissile came from, you can prepare yourself ahead of time. Aim for the glowing red light, spray it with your secondary machine gun. The hitbox on these is really quite large, so 90% of the time you'll be able to destroy them. And the great thing is, with the second missile intercepted, this list player is now completely spent until her missiles recharge, or they die and respawn. They're so easy to identify with their unique sound, making them also easy to APS even if you don't see the missile island coming. Got him for a few hits. He's down. Consider spawning a tank using the call-in tablet instead of spawning it at home base. Since tanks are so slow, ordering them closer to the front lines can save you a lot of dead time. It's kind of crazy how rarely you see players doing this since it was such a big part of the Battlefield 2042 promotional material. Pull up the tablet every now and again to see if there is a tank available. Choose the spot you want it deployed and it will arrive in seconds. Just make sure that you don't die while you're waiting for it to land and make sure that you don't let it land on you, otherwise you've just ordered the enemy a free tank. Well, I'm all done. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, then you're an absolute champion, and I hope that you can put this knowledge to good use. Please let me know if you have any tips of your own in the comments, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Also, shout out to Timeless Gamer, Cabal, and Andy Social Elf. They helped me massively with this video, whether they knew it or not. Please go check out their channels. Have an awesome day.